and the story continues. If you have not heard of me, my name is OneTap and I make Minecraft videos here on YouTube. Today I'm going to be attempting to survive for 200 days in Minecraft Hardcore, originally by Luke the Notable. I'll leave his stuff down in the description below. I'm pretty sure I haven't uploaded in a while and I'm super sorry for that, but I've just been so busy with school recently. So if you've not seen the first 100 days, I would recommend that you guys go check that out first because I explain a lot of things including my texture pack, my seed, my shaders, like pretty much all the info that you might want to know. One last thing before we start into the actual video, let's smash 1000 likes for 300 days, can we do it? Well sit back and relax, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And we are back inside of the world, so I spent day 101 kind of reorganizing things as I was kind of lost, I forgot a lot about this world, because it's been about a month and a half since I've been on actually. So I cleaned up some things and got myself caught up with what was going on. When day 102 rolled around, I worked on our little villager house that we started in the last 100 days, just clearing out some room for a basement. Okay, so down in this basement area, I'm thinking of kind of doing it as like a place where all the villagers are going to be, where most of them are going to be at least. There's probably going to be a trading hall down here, and up on top, there's going to be just a couple villagers and like maybe some chairs, just things that look nice on the top, because that's all we're really going to be seeing most of the time from out here. Um, I was thinking of doing it two stories earlier, like I was going to have a set of stairs up here, but I don't know, I feel like it might just look better with one story, I and just have everything downstairs, I don't really know. We are going to just go with that for now, and if it looks trash, I can always change it up. And for the roof of the house, I was choosing whether to go with stone brick or normal wood. I might go with stone brick, but it could look a little bit weird because everything else in the area is made out of normal wood. I'm just going to try it out and just see how it goes. And like a lot of things, when I actually built this thing, I, it just looked terrible. I thought it was going to look cool in my mind, it just didn't look too good. So I just replaced it with just some fences. And it's probably just going to be like one of those normal villager houses you find inside villages, except just a lot bigger. And after a bit of decorating, this is kind of what I got so far, and I also want to put some plants on the side of the house maybe, just to make it a little bit more lively. Right now we don't have any clay so I can't even make flower pots, but I will get that done soon. Okay, so I want to freshen up our paths a little bit. If you've seen the last season, uh, you will know that I kind of did this like cool old dirty path kind of effect in my last series. And I really like the look of that, so I'm gonna try to redo it in this world, but I realized that I didn't really have the materials needed, because I had coarse dirt, I had like flowers, I had all these tall grasses, so I'm gonna have to wait until I get those, I guess, until I can finish up this path thing. Regardless, I still worked on the path, I just tried the best I could with the materials that I had on me. And this process actually takes a long time for me, at least, as I'm not that good at building paths. I kinda just do it and just look around and just decide if it looks good or not. If it doesn't look good, I kinda just delete it and try something else. Well, enjoy this mini time lapse of me working on the path on the right side of our house. I woke up on day 106 and I wanted to finish up our villager house because we left out one crucial thing. I brought our flower pots over to our villager house and I just added them in the corner and now I'm gonna go get some flowers or actually just cactus I guess, just to make it look more alive inside the building. And with a touch of a little plant, the inside of our house looks a lot better already. Next up, I've actually been braiding these sheep a lot because I want to be shearing these guys to get the wool, to make some beds, to use that to get some netherite. That is kind of the plan I have so far. And later that day, I grabbed a bunch of my beds and I traversed down into the deep depths of the nether. I didn't really bring that many beds with me, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get that much netherite, but hopefully we can just get a start on our netherite year. Wow. And many explosions later, I walked out with only two pieces of ancient debris, but that is okay for now. Alright, so I went home, added some more beds to our compound, and breeded up more of our villagers, because I think maybe a mending book is pretty necessary soon. Ayo, they be making love right there, let's try not to disturb them. 
I went to go pick up all of my sticks, and when I got back, the baby villager was already there. Like, that was so quick, dude. I legit left for like a minute or two, and they've already made a baby. All right, well, the real reason that I want to trade with these guys is because I want to get a ton of ender pearls, because that will help us grab an Elytra in the end. And Elytra is like one of the most important parts of transportation in Minecraft, so that is going to be pretty important. Day 110 was super boring, so I'm just going to make it quick. I grabbed wood, and I traded some more. That's it. Oh, by the way, now we have two babies, and I also placed a cartographer table down in the corner right there. I also spotted a cat, and I realized that I actually needed one for a creeper farm that I was going to be making soon. Um, I think you tamed them with raw fish. I hope you do at least. I'm going to have to go fish a little bit. I've, I don't think I've even fished yet this season. A little later, I got five cod. I hope this is going to be enough to breed him. He was running around like a maniac, but I eventually caught him, and there we go. We got the achievement, best friends forever. By day 112, we got 16 ender pearls. I think I might need to get a little bit more just in case. And then we can finally go and grab our elytra. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, for real now, I think we are probably ready to go and take on the end to try to find that elytra. I cleared out most of my inventory and restocked in stakes, so it should be enough for me throughout this journey. I brought a bunch of cobblestone blocks with me just for like building and stuff and got two water buckets. So I think I should be ready to go. I'm so hyped for this. It's a good thing that I saved my coordinates from the last time I went to the end. So now I know exactly what direction to go. Within a day, I finally arrived at the stronghold. Now it is our time to go and grab the elytra from the end cities. Hopefully this thing is not too far away. I was actually pretty surprised to see that all of the XP was still there, so that is actually amazing. And now I'd be chilling at level 73. I also grabbed the ender egg and I got the next generation achievement. And once I got to the other side of that special portal leading me over to the other side, there was actually a end city, literally right where I spawned, which is just crazy. Sadly, there was no flying ship kind of thing, so there wasn't going to be elytra at this location, so I was going to have to keep on looking. Also, I'm going to come back and loot this later. I just want to fill up my inventory right now. I have these like waterfalls set up around like my like tracks, and I also make them too wide, by the way. You know, you got to be safe. But yeah, I have these waterfalls, and pretty much if I fall down, I can save myself from death by like, catching myself on the waterfalls, if that makes sense. After a pretty long time of searching, we came across another one. When I explored inside, however, I realized that this one was a dud as well. There was no flying ship to be seen. I just went inside and looted everything up. And a while later, I found another one, but this one was also shipless. Like, these are supposed to have a higher than 50% chance to spawn with this ship, and I still haven't gotten one. That's kind of unlucky. Hopefully, third time is the charm. And I eventually came across my third end city. I think I saw a ship on this one, which is good news. I was using the levitation from the shulkers to like bring myself up to get a better view. And yes, indeed, I was right. There it was, an end ship. I am so hyped for this. Let's get our elytra. And so I made my way inside of the ship, grabbed that precious elytra along with some useless items, maybe inside of the chests that were nearby. I spent the next day looting things up and grinding a lot of shulker boxes because I think I'm going to need a lot of these guys. And I don't have to come back here because I didn't get enough, so I'm just gonna try to get a lot more than I actually need. I came across a ton of good loot, including this god shovel. Like, pretty much this is a max diamond shovel, right? Like, I don't think there's anything else you can add to it. I completely forgot how good of loot you can find in these end cities. And there were tons of diamonds too, I got a lot of diamonds from this trip. Finally we are done and we can go back into the overworld. Since my inventory was filling up, I put most of the items into the ender chest that was inside the end cities. So all I gotta do now is just craft an ender chest and I should get all of my loot. I collected all of our materials for an ender chest, and when I opened it, there was a ton of good loot inside of it just waiting for me. Now we had 20 diamonds, that's crazy. I spent the rest of the day combining our armors together with the ones we had in the end cities because the end city armor was actually insane. They've got protection for and mending and I pretty much just combined it with ours and now we had some better armor. Alright, so I swapped out a lot of our armor here. We got a protection 4 unbreaking 3 and mending helmet, a protection 3 unbreaking 3 chest plate, a mending protection 4 unbreaking 3 leggings, and unbreaking 3 protection 4 boots. So once we get a mending villager, we can add mending to all of our tools and armor and it'll be a lot better. Nothing on my elytra just yet. Our sword, I swapped it out for a sharpness 4 and looting 3. Our pickaxe, I combined 2 and we got unbreaking 3, efficiency 4, and mending. And I swapped out our shovel with our god shovel, the mending, unbreaking 3, efficiency Efficiency 4 and Fortune 3. I don't know why, it would, what would Fortune 3 be used for in a shovel? But yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think we got anything for bows, so my bow is the same. But our loot is looking pretty good right now. Oh, and also our, our anvil broke, so I'm gonna have to make another one. Maybe an iron farm is gonna be necessary because I don't think I have much iron left. Okay, never mind. I got two stacks of nine, but still, like, yeah, we probably need a bit more iron, so maybe an iron farm is necessary soon. 
In the next day, I worked to get a lectern so we can turn one of our open villagers into a librarian and hopefully get a mending book pretty soon. This is gonna be kind of a long and tedious process of me just breaking this thing over and over again and it's gonna be kind of boring, but I'm gonna have to do it. And so I kept on breaking the lectern and placing it back to try and get a villager with a mending book. I was actually really lucky because we got the mending book fairly early. If you've seen the last season, you'll know that it takes me a while to get those mending books. For some reason, it just it's just harder to get. So I purchased a mending book from the villager and I went back and I was ready to put it on my boots. But then I realized that we didn't have an anvil anymore, so I was gonna have to make another one. Next up on my list, I'm gonna need some fuel for my new elytra. So that means probably making a creeper farm to supply us of our gunpowder because we're gonna be needing to make a lot of rockets. Creeper farms require cats though to scare away the creepers. I don't have that many cats. I only have one actually, so I'm gonna have to go get some more. We're gonna do that tomorrow morning though. I was woken up to a surprise in my storage room. There was actually another cat there. That was pretty hype. I went and tamed him immediately. It's a good thing my compound kind of counts as a village now, I guess, because I don't know exactly what the requirements are, but there are cats spawning, so I ain't complaining. So I settled on making the outside out of smooth stone for the creeper farm, just like I did in the first season. I'm pretty sure I did it out of smooth stone. I'm gonna be using the same creeper farm from the last season. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of what video I'm using for this creeper farm, just in case any of you guys want to build it as well. I picked a spot next to my old mob grinder. I'm pretty sure you guys don't wanna see me just like build a box kind of thing with this creeper farm, so I'm just gonna make it pretty quick for you guys. I might not even build it in one sitting. I don't know what the plan is right now. At this point, I feel like I've worked on the creeper farm enough. All I gotta do is just get the cats in and build the second level. But I actually want to finish up our villager house because that thing has been unfinished for so long. Okay, this kind of makes me a little annoyed, but I literally built for like two and a half days and I went into replay mode to try to give you guys like a good cinematic kind of thing of what I was building down in the basement and it was literally broken. Like I couldn't, I couldn't play the replay for some reason. I restarted like everything, but yeah, there's really nothing I can do about it. So rip, there's no replay for this clip. Okay, this is what the basement looks like right now. I did so much, dude, and I can't even show you how, like, the process of me building this. Yeah, we got one villager in here, and I'm working on getting the rest down, but it's taking a really long time. I pretty much have, like, a minecart system going all the way up from their little base down into the bottom where I set them up. And this guy was being so annoying. Inside the replay, this probably took me, like, 10 minutes by itself just trying to get the villager in here because I kept on messing up and leaving gaps for him to, like, jump out. It was just a mess. It was a mess. And this is super expandable because all I gotta do is just break this wall and then I can move everything that way. So yeah, I will be back once I move all of the villagers down here. It's gonna take a while. And thankfully my replay mode actually worked for this replay because this was a boring one for me to do. Yeah, as you can see, this is kind of the process that I go through trying to put the villagers in the correct spots. I'm not sure this is the most efficient way. This is kind of just the way that I thought up in my mind. It's a little bit scuffed too, like sometimes you'll see that the villager will actually escape and I just have to chase it and then get him back in the minecart and push him downstairs. It's kind of a hassle, but it works eventually. And also guys, I'm trying something new with this video. For the background music, I'm going to be using only Minecraft specific music. In my other video during the time lapse, sometimes I'd try some other non-copyright songs, but in this video, I'm only just going to do Minecraft songs. Tell me what you guys think. Do you guys like this kind of vibe better or do you think the old like non-copyright songs are better? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, finally done moving all of our villagers down. It's taken a really long time, but I finally got it done and it looks trash because I'm using cobblestone and stuff for the build. But later on, when we get better materials, I will try swapping things out because this, this just looks nasty. Plus the flooring. I was trying to think about what flooring to do and I was, uh, you can see I was first going with cobble, but it, it didn't, I didn't think it looked that good. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now until I think of a better flooring. But anyway, if you are new here and you don't know how these work, I build these like all the time in like literally every world. I don't exactly remember which video is from, but you can find these kind of tutorials on YouTube easily. Just search up like Villager Trading Hall or something, 1.16. This is one from a while back, I think 1.14, but it still works perfectly fine. So pretty much how it works is I'm going to lure a zombie down in here and then I'm going to trap it so he can't get out. And while the zombie is down here, he can not actually attack these villagers in this state. But I have a lever right here that can control them. And when I drop them down, the villagers can't move, but the zombies can attack them. So pretty much, I let the zombies infect them, then I bring them back up, and then cure them, and then I get way cheaper trades. So that is pretty much how this thing works. It's really simple. Barely any redstone. All I got is one piston, and one lever, and some redstone underneath. It really is simple. Let me just show you. It's just, it's just one piece of redstone, and then a block right next to it. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this little basement area. I just want to work on making it look nicer. And yeah, the upstairs is kind of blank right now. It's okay. I think it's time to go to bed. Oh no, our, our iron golem just died. 
Oh, hey, there's another one. He's about to die, too. Oh, there's another one. What are they doing, dude? They're just chilling, bro. Kind of hype. I guess we got some protectors around our compound. That's always nice. And now that I had this whole villager trading system finally up and ready to go, this next day was all just spent working on the money. You already know I gotta get the bread. Okay, that was cringe. I'm sorry for that. But yeah, anyway, I spent this day just grinding out some emeralds, getting tons of emeralds, because I'm gonna need a lot of these guys. We have a cartographer that trades glass panes for emeralds, and we have a fletcher that trades sticks for emeralds. So right now, there's a lot of ways for us to get emeralds. A little way through, however, I noticed that this was actually taking a lot more resources than I originally thought, because I forgot to get the zombie thing going. So we're gonna need some weakness potions and some golden apples. And also, we're gonna have to find a zombie that is not gonna despawn and lure him down here. So I started getting our weakness potions going. We also already had five golden apples, so that gave us a great head start, but we actually needed six. So I just crafted a couple more golden apples with the rest of the apples that we had. And I was finally done preparing. Now all I had to do was just wait for nightfall and try to capture two zombies. When I came around, I found myself a zombie that would pick up one of my items and I lured him down into my basement, where I would be keeping him forever along with all of our villagers. And it wasn't too long when I got my next zombie and brought him down on the other side. Now we're finally done! Oh and by the way, one of the zombies that I killed dropped a potato, so that's kinda cool. I don't think we have potatoes yet in this world. The next morning, I tested out my machine and thank goodness it worked. It was working pretty well. I'm sorry for these villagers, but don't worry guys, I'm gonna get you guys cured as fast as possible. I'm dying! Help me! Now cue the mini montage. After completing a bit of chores, I checked up on our villagers, and yes indeed, they actually have changed their prices. Now, earning and using our money will be a lot more efficient. Okay, so now that I got all these guys discounted, I promise this is the last day Thank I'm gonna you. be grinding out some more emeralds, because like, this has just made it a lot more easier. Oh, and I saw one of these guys, but he had no trades that looked like any value to me. On day 135, I took a break from all this work that I've been doing. I started heading out to the ocean that was behind our base, and I think, if I'm not wrong, there is a coral reef somewhere back there. Hopefully we can find some cool loot. I don't, I don't know if they actually have loot or not. I haven't been to one in a while. And I ended up coming across some lights in the bottom of the ocean. I think this is what I saw before. So I guess there isn't any coral reefs here, but at least there are sea pickles. We can take those and those make some great decorations. I also spotted a shipwreck out in the oceans, and I think this is the first one that we've found on this world. There wasn't anything good inside, pretty much all just useless stuff. The next day, I spotted one of these huge ruined nether portals. I've never seen one this big that was on the surface. Maybe they spawn bigger when they're underwater, I'm not sure. There was a nice gold block just chilling at the top, and the loot was pretty good. There was an efficiency 5 golden pickaxe inside. And when we finally got home, I decided to purchase a bunch of mending books from our villager because I still don't have any on like a lot of my armor and tools. Including our elytra too. We haven't enchanted that thing at all yet. Good thing that this stuff was cheap actually, because it only cost me 2 experience levels to apply it onto my weapons and armor. Now next up, I think we've been anticipating this for a very long time, but I think it is finally time to start working on our next base. What I have in mind right now is kind of like a big mansion in like a center of a town or something, kind of something, something like that. I don't really know how I'm going to make it work, but I just have a cool vision in my mind of just having a big old house just in the center of like a town square and all that kind of stuff. So the first step to building any big base is just planning. I've got to plan out this whole thing, so I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'm going to keep it moderately sized for now, and I can always expand it later. Okay, so at this point, I think you guys already know how much I love time lapses. So here's just, I'm kind of just planning out what my base is trying to look like right now, and I'm using three blocks. I'm using spruce for like support beams and pillars. I'm using cobblestone and wool to kind of just like alternate so I can see exactly how many blocks there are. So I'm going to spend some time and just kind of design what my base is going to look like from the foundation up. Alright, oh! I was about to start, bro. I was about to start the recording and the creeper just pulls up, dude. Like, that was very unexpected. Okay, well, after that jump scare, we're gonna get back into things. So I'm kind of done with, like, the main kind of house, the building for our base. There is gonna be much more. This is just gonna be, like, the main central thing. And I'm thinking of making this two to three stories up as well. As you can see, I didn't make it too big, because in the past, I've done houses that are similar to this, that are humongous, and the roofs are just super hard to make. I'm really not good at making nice big roofs. 
Like, I think just sticking to small detailed roofs are much better. Well, anyway, I'm going to explain to you guys what each thing is. So right here, we kind of have like a little small room right here. I could hold like some storage. I could have some decorations. Not sure yet. This is going to be a big room, a grand room. Could be like a dining room. I don't know if we would need a dining room, honestly. But just a big room with a lot of stuff in it. And also, by the way, our storage is going to be in a separate area, probably. Or, yeah, it's just going to be like a separate building connected to this one. Right here, I'm thinking of doing a fireplace, honestly, on this side. I could break out these walls and just make it like a whole big thing. I feel like a fireplace in this house would look pretty cool. Back here, we got a back door. And right here, I'm planning on making a dome for like, I don't know, just a dome-sized building. I think that'd look kind of cool in the back. And I don't know if I actually talked about the front entrance yet, but this is going to be the front entrance. It's going to be sloping up by one block. Everything that I'm going to be building on this house is going to be supported on one block. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, this is just going to be what the house is, the big house, or I guess main house. Not really big. It's not that big. But yeah, there's a lot of planning to do, a lot of material gathering to do. I think I'm probably going to do it mainly out of spruce and oak wood. That is kind of my thoughts. Oh, I don't know if I talked about this. This is going to be a balcony. That is about it, time to go to bed. I should probably, I'm gonna bring this bed back home actually. I spent the next few days gathering clay, spruce wood, and oak wood, just for our brand new base. This was gonna take a lot of resources. Okay, so I gathered a bunch of materials and I kinda already started on the front steps. This thing is gonna take so much wood. Now that I'm thinking about it, the frame is pretty much all just gonna be wood. So I'm gonna have to be buying a ton of these diamond axes from that villager. But I think it'll be worth it in the end once I finish everything up, because it looks really cool in my mind. Now here's another mini time lapse of me just building some pillars. Now I watched this back and I realized that this was kind of boring, not even gonna lie, watching me build these pillars. So I'm just gonna show you guys a little section of it, I'm not gonna show you guys the whole thing, just to save some time. But honestly though, that day I had nowhere near enough wood to finish just the support beams. I spent the following days gathering so much spruce wood. I had my bow mill ready and there were just these 2x2 two two trees that I was planting and breaking and planting and breaking over and over again. This is probably my best source of wood income at the moment. And after all my work was done, I had so many stacks of spruce wood that I literally could not even count it. I also had two very worn out diamond axes that I was gonna need to replace. So enjoy this next little mini time lapse of me just building some more parts of the house. This is gonna be the last one, I promise. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I love Mythical Sausage and a lot of my builds are actually inspired by him. I like using the same block palettes that he does. Spruce is one of my favorite woods for building. So just a little shout out to him. Okay, okay, I'm sorry for that, but I did way too many time lapses of this build. We're gonna be moving on to something else, because I've been working on this house for a bit too long. I think something important is actually getting some more cats, because we need to make this creeper farm. I started this thing a while ago, and we still have our elytra unused and untouched, and we gotta put that thing to work. Also, I kinda made a mistake of moving my villagers down before I got the cats, because before that used to count as a village because there were 5 occupied beds, but now since they're moved down into the trading center area, there are no occupied beds, so this place does not count as a village anymore. Which means I'm gonna go in and have to find a village outside somewhere and gather the cats there. There was a village like a couple hundred blocks away from my main spawn chunks, so that wasn't too bad, it wasn't that far of a walk. Oh ow, I just hit the mic, my bad. And this village was populated with cats, so that actually helps us out a ton. Really didn't take me that long to get two cats. And there we go, all four of our cats brought back home. These guys look adorable, not even gonna lie. I'm so sad that I gotta use these guys to fuel my creeper farm, dude. This feels bad. Day 150 marks the halfway point of this video, and I spent that day finishing up the creeper farm. And boom, we finished up our creeper farm, and now we've got unlimited gunpowder for us. So here we go, here is the gunpowder collection area, and it's looking good, hopefully this works. I tried it out for a day, and the results were pretty good. This is gonna fix all of our gunpowder problems. 
This is honestly amazing, dude. It has been so long since I've flew with an elytra. And now getting around our whole world is gonna be so much easier. An idea just popped in my mind to make like a barn slash stable kind of thing like we had in the previous season. I'm just gonna mark out where I want it to be. I'm not gonna build or anything right now, just for later. Okay, so right here I'm marking out where a tree is gonna be, kind of like in front of my house. I might make it a custom tree and I might make it just a normal tree, I'm not sure yet. Probably a custom tree, because those those can look pretty cool, but I've like never done those, so I'm gonna have to learn that. But anyway, while I'm working on this pathing here, I need to talk to you guys about the future of this series. So last season, I didn't do that much big builds, I didn't do like any redstone stuff. And this time, I want to completely just try something different, step out of my comfort zone. I'm going to be trying to make some redstone builds, trying to do even bigger builds than last season. It's going to be great. Those are pretty much my plans for this season. We'll see how it goes. I want to make a big item sorter too, because those, those look super cool, and I have no idea how to make one. Well, I've got so many builds in my mind, but I feel like I've been building too much right now, and I don't want to bore you guys with just only building, so we're going to go and try to find some netherite and explore some of the nether. I could explore places that I've never been before, I also found a magma cube, I, that's my first magma cube this season, but traversing the nether was easier than ever, but I still had to keep in mind that I could probably kill myself by running into some lava or something, that happened a number of times last season. I took my gold ingots and I crafted those into some gold bars, and went to go barter with some piglins, or hoglins, I don't know what they're called. We got the advancement, ooh shiny, that's pretty epic, and we also got another achievement for getting some crying obsidian when I was trading with these guys. Day 155, I went home and crafted some beds so we can use those to find some netherite down in the nether. Let's see how much netherite we can walk out with today. Yeah, and I ran out of steak a lot, so I killed a lot of my cows, and I'm just breeding them up again, and I can't believe how many cows we have. There's actually a crazy amount of cows here. And if you haven't noticed, I have six ancient debris in my hand right now. I think it was a pretty successful mining trip. Let's go and smelt this stuff. This should be recorded right here. I'm about to make my very first netherite ingot. That just looks beautiful. I can't wait to put this stuff on our armor. I'm probably going to put it on my armor first because honestly, surviving is the most important in hardcore and armor prevents us from losing hearts, so I'm just going to upgrade my helmet, I mean my chest plate and my leggings. And there it is, we look pretty cool now, I can't wait till we get the rest of our armor pieces into netherite. Alright, so we're at our new house here and I just want to explain some things. So, I want to build a storage area down here somewhere because our storage area in our old house is kind of getting cluttered, not gonna lie. Oh, and by the way, this cobblestone thing is where we'll be building my fireplace. I'm just kind of showing where it is. It's gonna be on this side of the house. So yeah, this thing honestly is kind of small right now. It's just like one room over here, one small thing over here, and a small thing over there. But don't worry, I'm going to be trying to expand this as much as I can later on whenever we need some more space. But I'm thinking of making it two stories too, so can't wait for that to happen. It's probably going to take multiple videos for this thing to get finally finished. Also, this is going to be like a back door to another kind of building back here somewhere. I gotta, I gotta fix up this terrain. This terrain is kind of messy. But pretty much, yeah, this store is going to lead to a back area with like a dome. I want to build a dome. Domes just, they look cool to me. But yeah, I need to make a stairway down somewhere because I want our storage room to be a basement. So I don't know where this stairway should go. So since this is the front entrance, we turn that way for the balcony and then we turn this way for the fire area. Honestly, I feel like we could walk in this way and then it could be here. It could be against this wall. So you walk in and then this is the, this is where it splits. Uh, we want two blocks there it should go like that. Um, I we're just gonna keep it at that I, I hope it works out But before we build that basement to get a better view of like kind of the floor plan of my house I just wanted to put some like beams down on the floor just to get a better view of like what's going on and where the rooms are And by the end of day 159 you can see kind of the progress that we've gotten so far the flooring is looking almost finished I'm just planning on doing just some spruce on the ground, nice and simple, not too much of like a vibranty colors. Spruce is like a nice and dull color. And also here is the section of my basement. I kind of have it on this side of the house. And honestly, it feels a bit squishy. I kind of regret making it small, but I think it worked out at the end. So in this replay right here, I am clearing out the basement. And I was thinking to myself, like, how should I do this? Should I make the stairs turn? Should I do like a redstone staircase? Like it was a lot of confusing thoughts in my head. Oh yeah, and also we completely forgot about shulker boxes, so I crafted one and placed one down so I can pretty much have a place to store all my useless junk in.
Okay, and pretty much this is our progress so far. So right here, we turned down and we got a massive room. I'm probably going to be expanding it that way. When I do expand it, this is kind of just our layout right now, and we got a curved staircase. It kind of looks better than the straight staircase, I figured. It just it added more depth, and it just looked nicer overall. And plus, I got to add that pillar right in the corner. And the next two days were spent finishing up our basement, adding some more chest areas, adding walls, and just making everything look nicer. And here is our basement. After a lot of planning, this is kind of what I got, and I know these kind of look bland. Like, I, I'm stuck right now. I don't know what to do to make these look better. I've tried so many different things. But yeah, I'm kind of stuck right now. I don't I don't really have that good of ideas. So this is all that we got so far, though. Uh, this wall, I didn't know what to do with this wall, so I kind of made this like weird design. Also, you can kind of see through. If we go up here, you can see. You kind of can see through. There's a little hole. Because I, I realized it looked kind of boring when both walls were just like solid. And also when we walk down here, we got some bookshelves, lanterns. I might replace one of these bookshelves with a loom just to make it look like something is empty. And then we got a cactus plant right there, looking pretty nice. And we walk downstairs, we got some basic little like curves on the ceilings. And I don't know how long I'm going to extend this, but this is kind of the chest system that we got right here. And right here also, we've got a repair and disenchant thingy. I don't know what this is called. A grindstone, a grindstone, that's right. Okay, I forgot for a second. And right here... This is a stone cutter. That's pretty much the basement. I'm going to be done for now, though, because, like I said, I ran out of ideas, dude. Like, I'm just not feeling it right now, so I'm going to come back later. Hopefully, I have better ideas. All right, it's raining right now, but it's okay. You guys can see my inventory. It's looking clean and crisp. I finally just did a cleaning of it. Also, this path right here, I kind of just changed it to make it look a bit nicer, kind of like my paths in our old area. Just some coarser gravel and other things. Right here, I'm just making some layouts for some buildings I want to build. That one, for example, is like a fisherman hut. And then over here, this is going to be a flower bed. I'm waiting to get some puzzles, so I need to get a silk touch shovel. Hopefully that flower bed turns out pretty cool. Oh yeah, also a quick side note, I don't think I want to be using this path anymore, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so I'm sick of tired and building, and you guys are probably done watching me do that stuff. So I think we should go explore somewhere. I'm going to just travel some random direction, and let's see what we come across. Oh, and you love to see it. We already came across the ravine. See, like, I never would have found this if I didn't really go anywhere. Oh, and there's a mineshaft, too. That's nice. This looks like a pretty big ravine, honestly. Like, that, that's amazing. Also, I came across one of these guys. A desert temple. This is the first one that we've found on this world. Yeah, and the loot was mediocre. I don't know if this is good loot or not for desert temples, but we pretty much just got a diamond horse armor, two golden apples, and a couple diamonds. And I was about to head home because it was getting dark, and I came across another desert temple. That's really cool. This one was only a couple hundred blocks away from the other one. And the loot was pretty much exactly the same. And on the next day, when I arrived home, I decided to go and adventure down into that ravine slash mineshaft that we found earlier. I kind of feel like doing some exploring right now. And I already lost where it was. And while I was trying to find this ravine, I came across some llamas. These guys were so adorable. I don't know how to tame them, though. Like, I can't just leave them here, man. I, I really want these guys. Don't worry, I found the ravine once again, and now we can go mining. Mining is such a cool thing to do in Minecraft. It's just, like, a, such a calming and chill activity. Honestly, though, just look at the size of this thing. This place is humongous. All right, calm down, zombie. I, I, I had to talk, bro. Hey, hey, okay, okay, this thing is too dark, bro. I can't talk right now, and all these guys are just, like, fighting me, bro. Yeah, but just, this, this ravine is massive, bro. I probably should collect some iron while we're here, because I do not have unlimited iron, and I actually use iron a lot. Oh, I gotta watch my hearts. Oh my god, there's too many mobs. This is actually so dangerous. I'm gonna just run inside this little area right here so I can actually talk. But yeah, we need to get some iron though, because we do not have an iron farm right now. Those things take a long time to build, and I don't really want to build anything right now, because I've been building for a super long time. So I'm just going to go mining in this cave for a bit, and just try to collect as much iron and coal as I can, because coal I actually cannot make a farm out of, obviously. So we will run out of that stuff eventually. Ooh, there's some gold. And on day 167, all I did was mine. That's literally it. Just mined the whole day. On day 168, I found one of these chests in one of the mine shafts. Pretty much just some basic loot, just some gold and some rails. And I'm back from the mining trip, and this is pretty much all the stuff that I took with me. We've got a lot of iron, a lot of coal, and a little bit of gold, and some diamond. Or this stuff was from the desert temple, actually. This stuff did not come from the mining trip. I'm gonna actually move this stuff down into our new basement, right over here. Uh, let me just pick a chest to put it in. Let's do this one right here. This one's looking pretty good. This one is gonna be our valuable slash like ore chest for now but i'm gonna be splitting those up later 
Like for example, I think uh, maybe I'll, I'll have this chest for uh, ores and stuff and this chest for like other valuable things. Oh yeah, also I want to build this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sketch out like a, a rough draft of the dome back here. Probably gonna have like a small path leading into a dome. It would be kind of cool if I made it out of glass actually. If I could make it out of glass and then it could be like a little nature center. That, that would be, that would be sick dude. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be using this website that I found to help me make this dome slash circle building. You can make your own shape by adjusting these like sliders and then it'll tell you how to build it. I mean, it doesn't actually tell you step by step how to do it, but you can pretty much get a good idea just by looking at the pictures. Well, I guess I first have to start off by terraforming this land and making it flat so we can actually build on it because right now there is a big old lake just in our backyard. A lake though honestly sounds kind of cool. We should have one someday. And I got myself a start. I decided to do a circle that was 18 wide. It looks like it fits pretty nicely. Yeah, honestly though, 18 wide, that was like the perfect number to pick. What do you guys think? All right, I got myself an idea. So I got myself some oak logs and I'm gonna try using stripped oak logs and see how it looks. Just gonna replace all this cobblestone here. And also I brought some glass with me as well because I'm gonna be trying to put some glass on the top just so we can kind of see up into the sky while we're inside. Hopefully the stripped oak doesn't look too bad because like it's a really definitive block. You can see the border super easily so it doesn't flow together really that well. Alright, so our build is looking like this right now. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not sure if I like it quite yet, but we're, we're, we don't know 100% unless we're finally done with the build. Good thing this is a small build because if I don't like it, honestly, it's not that bad. Wood I can get back, uh, glass, it doesn't really matter. We literally live by desert. Okay, so I'll complete this thing real quick and then we can come back and see what it looks like. A few moments later. Alrighty, here we go. This this looks really bad, I know, but like, okay, this this is my thought process right now. I want to swap out these bottom logs here, because like, I, I think this stuff right here looks fine, but this bottom thing just does not look good at all. On the bright side though, the inside looks pretty cool. If you go inside here, like this, this is pretty cool. I can see some like ponds, some animals maybe in here. That that, that that's just like an idea right now. But also, yeah, I'm, I'm adding these things on the side. I think they look better than just only the glass. I still have to add those things on these two sides as well. So I'm gonna get to that real quick. Alright guys, I need your thoughts down in the comments below right now. So I could either make it all glass like this. I feel like this actually looks a bit better, I'm not sure though. And if you guys don't like this ogre here, which I don't either, just like tell me down in the comments below what kind of block I should outline this thing with. But I mean the clear glass, but I mean the clear glass honestly looks pretty fire. I'm gonna break into this real quick. The inside looks good though, like I like the inside. So yeah, just leave me down in the comments some suggestions about fixing up this thing and then we can fix it up in the next episode. I started off day 171 gathering some more sand because we used a lot of glass for that build and I just wanted to replenish our stock. Gathering the sand is so satisfying though, it's just so smooth and silky because like you can break the blocks pretty much at lightning speed. And I also Thank traded you. with our villagers once again because I was you. mending up our armor Thank and our shovel because our shovel was Thank getting you. pretty worn out. Trading with villagers and getting their XP is a great Thank way you. for me that I've Thank experienced you. at least Thank to repair my tools because Thank it's super you. fast Thank and easy. You. Okay, it's super smelter time. These things are pretty useful. I can pretty much use them whenever I need to smelt a big quantities of blocks, including sand into glass. They're actually really simple to make. It's just that it costs a lot of hoppers and I don't have an iron farm. Dude, I, I'm delaying this iron farm so bad. It's just I really don't want to build one. There's such a hassle getting all the villagers up and everything. It's just, it just sucks. I'm gonna clear out this spot right here. It's on like the far side of our storage room. This is gonna be where the super smelter is gonna be placed. And the super smelter is finally complete. If we take a look here, it's like the most basic design. We put our fuel inside this chest, our things that we want to smelt inside this chest, which is going to be sand. I'm just going to throw that in there for now. And our output is right here. I need to grab some coal real quick to test if this works. It should work out. All right, fuel inside this chest. And oh, that, that goes really fast. Flick the lever. And now both minecarts should be going off. And yes, sir, it looks like it is working. And when this is all done, I can flick off the lever. It probably should be done now. Yep, it's done. And our output should be going inside this chest. Everything is working perfectly well. Well, that's great. Now we got a basic super smelter done. If I'm going to need to like, I don't know, if I'm going to need more of these, I might try to make it look a bit nicer because this is kind of crude right now. We just have this random archway into just some stone and dirt walls. Like I I'll fix this if we ever need to. But yeah, I think it's going really well right now. This, this thing is working and it's incorporated pretty well inside of our basement too. 
I'm actually going to put our super smelter to work right away. I'm going to smelt up these three stacks of cobblestone to give us some more smooth stone because right now we do not have a silk touch pickaxe. So this should do. And with that smooth stone, I put it inside the machine again and gave myself a couple of pieces of smooth stone. And I wanted to make some armor stands. And in this scene right here, you can witness me completely forget how to make armor stands. Like, it was kind of embarrassing. So I've made some changes to the front of the house. And right here, this is going to be like a map wall kind of thing inside a little marsh. And that building in the distance, I don't really know what that is right now. Just It's just there. Oh, and since we got saddles earlier, I went and tried to tame myself a horse, and I, I don't know what I was doing, but I was trying to right-click him with the saddle, and then I realized I'm I'm kind of dumb, because you're not supposed to do that when taming a horse. Yeah, it looked like he had a lot of hearts. I, I think that's a lot for a horse, so I, I really want to get this guy. And there we go, now we have him tamed, the hearts appeared, and I can put this saddle on him now. That's how we do it. Ooh, okay, this, this guy's pretty fast. Oh, there's a skeleton. Oh, no. Oh, no. I was gonna say he jumps pretty high, but okay, I, I gotta run, dude. There's so many mobs everywhere. So I brought my horse back home, and then I quickly crafted some leads, because I wanted to keep this guy safe. For now, I'm just gonna bind him onto this little fence post right here. But later on, this building in this corner is where I'm gonna be building the stables to keep my horse. Next up, I'm building my fishing dock. It's kind of just a place where I can store my boats, and also it's just a designated area where I can go fish. Also, a small hut beside it where I can store all of my fishing gear and fish. Just a short little side project that I think will be kind of cool. Here is what the dock looks like by the end of the day. I think it looks pretty good. I wish this river was honestly a bit bigger though. Because like, I don't know, our dock is way too close to the other side. I got one more lantern. I'm just going to put it on. I'm going to put it on this one. I just realized we don't have a sugarcane farm yet. Like a, like a fully automatic one. We have that big old sugarcane thing here. Well, let me look at it real quick. We have this big old sugarcane like row over here by the cows, but it's not automatic. And since we have a gunpowder farm now, we're going to need a sugarcane farm to go along with it to make ourselves some paper just to supply some rockets easier. Plus, I'm pretty sure sugarcane farms are pretty easy to make. I know we need observers, so these need cobble, redstone, and quartz. I already got quartz on me. And these things make a lot over time, so I'm just gonna make a bunch 16. I, that might have been too much, actually. I don't think I'm gonna need uh, that big of a sugarcane farm. Wait, hold on. Let, let's find a place for this thing. Oh, <laughs> I hate when that happens, dude, with tall grass. I feel like I'm just gonna put it somewhere. I'll put it over here, actually. I'll just have it right behind our gunpowder farm. I'm just gonna make a marking right here with my cobblestone, and I'll come back with the needed materials. Now it's time to build our sugarcane farm, I'm gonna make this thing kinda compact and more on the tall side. Oh, and in the background you can actually see a creeper slowly creep up to me and I don't even notice until it explodes. Like, I literally did it- I didn't make a single sound, I swear. But yeah, I didn't really do much damage, so it was okay. Also, you're gonna see me using a sand at the very beginning, and if you're gonna make this farm, use dirt, please. Because, like, when you try to move around the rails and stuff, the sand has gravity, so it just falls and falls and it just keeps on messing me up. So just use dirt, it saves a lot of time. Okay, this is kind of a problem. Underneath our mob farm, there's tons of mobs always spawning there, no matter what time of day it is, because it's super dark down there. I think I'm gonna have to light this up, actually. Okay, back on track, our sugarcane farm right here. It's looking good, it's working well, I'm pretty sure. I was trying to make it tall, you know, but I, I couldn't really quite figure out how to do it. I was experimenting a lot, but I, I just couldn't figure it out. So I just built a second one on the other side. And both of these things go into that one chest on the front, and yeah, it's looking good and ready to go. Later in that day, I grabbed my elytra and I flew out to explore and I found another village. I quickly realized though that this village was the exact same village that we found before with the cats, so there was nothing special here. There was, however, something special in the desert that was nearby. I found this weird looking structure of two gold blocks and some stone bricks and I was confused at first, but when I mined the gold, I realized this was actually a ruined nether portal that was in the ground, like submerged in the sand. How cool is that? The next day, I came across a bunch of flowers in this open field, and I just collected all of them to add to our paths back at home. 
Something I'm ready for now I feel like is a nether highway. We can use those to travel super long distances and I think we should make one right now. They're really simple to make too. If you don't know how to make one, follow along. You're gonna need a couple of ladders, I'm just gonna get nine. Also gonna need to grab some ender pearls. Do well, you only actually need one, I'm just gonna bring six with me just in case. And then you need 10 pieces of obsidian to build the portal when you're up in the nether. I don't have enough so I'm gonna have to get more. Four other random building blocks and also a flint and steel. There we go. Now I'm ready to go. Actually, first, let me grab some more obsidian. Now I'm going to start digging up till I reach the targeted block Y level 127. Now when you find this targeted block 127, it is that block that I'm looking at right now. You're going to want to place some ladders leading up to it. But first, we have to do something that I forgot about real quick. So I'm back in the overworld and I am building up super high, it doesn't really matter that high, it just has to be high enough so it doesn't interfere with any other nether portals in your area, and I'm going to build another nether portal up here. Now I'm going to take notes of my coordinates and I'll show you guys why later. Now when I light this thing up, I'm not going to go in, I'm just going to leave it like that and just continue back to the nether. And now grab your ender pearl, make sure you have everything, so you don't want to be missing anything, that would be pretty bad. And then aim it at this pixel right here, right above the ladder. And boom, you should be up on the nether ceiling now. It's that easy. All right, now when we're on the nether ceiling, this is where the coordinates from earlier come into play. So since we know that one block in the nether equals eight blocks in the overworld, we're going to divide those coordinates by eight. And our new coordinates come out to be nine and negative 25. So now I'll find nine, negative 25 and construct a nether portal there. That way the pairing should work correctly. So then the nether portals don't get confused and we mix them up and like the, everything just goes bad because I hate when that happens. And now for the moment of truth, will our nether portal bring us to the one on the sky? Oh, there's some mushrooms there. Alright, anyway, we want this nether portal to bring us out to the one that I built up in the sky. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's go. It looks like we're in the right nether portal. And now if we hop back inside, it should spawn us back up on the ceiling. And there we go. It looks like everything is working well. Now we have full access to the nether ceiling where we can make nether highways and multiple other things up there. On day 179, I had the goal of completing our storage downstairs, just adding more chests, and also transferring everything over. And that was such a boring task, like I, I had my shulker boxes ready, and I was just going back and forth, back and forth, transporting my items. This took up all of day 179, and even a bit of day 180. Phew, and it's finally done, this took so long. I got all this stuff sorted, I even added some signs that tell us what these chests are, and I'm just gonna run through them real quick. So starting right here, we got mob drops in this chest, we got our food in this chest, and I decided to keep our food and our seeds separate. Decorations are going to be in this chest, miscellaneous items, some random stuff will go in here. I'm going to add a redstone chest most likely, so that's where I'm going to be keeping the rails and minecart, but for now, I'm going to keep them in miscellaneous. In this chest, we got ores, and down here, we got valuable items. Up here, we got our tools, and above that, we got our armor. Oh, there's, there's some shears in there, that's not supposed to be in there. Okay, over here we got wood, and underneath we got cobble. There's another cobble chest right here because, uh, yeah, we, we didn't have enough space. Some other blocks that are going to be in here, and then we got dirt, sand, gravel in there. This is going to be our books. Up here we got potions, and right here we got nether-themed items, and I think that's all. We are going to be adding a lot more chests and just better sorting later on, but this is what we got so far, and I'm liking the look of it. I've actually been doing some trading recently just like here and there because I've been gathering a lot of emeralds to use as part of our beacon. Because we need a beacon, like it's day 181 I think and we, we still don't even have a beacon on this world. But I should probably build an iron farm before that though because using iron blocks is going to be a lot easier than just grinding all of those emeralds out. And yeah, we have about 5 stacks of emeralds right here I think, yep, about 5 stacks of emeralds. That's a lot but not quite enough to make a whole beacon. Oh, and by the way, the reason that I got these empty maps was because I want to make this map wall right here in front of our house. It's just going to be like a 3x3, three three, and I'm just going to open the first one right now. So this is going to be the very center of the map. Yeah, I'm just going to fly around and try to get all nine of the maps completely covered so that our map wall will actually be complete. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Okay, now I got all nine of my map pieces finally finished, and here is what it looks like. Oh, I can't. I'm trying to place a torch up there, but I can't actually reach that. That's annoying. Our area actually looks pretty nice. We got some sand. We got some rivers. I awoke on day 182 to realize that I didn't have my bow anymore. I have no idea how long I've been missing this thing, and I just realized now. But I even went down to my chest, and I couldn't find it. I'm just going to be using this Power 3 Punch 2 bow as my substitute for now. 
until we find it. It probably got lost somewhere when I was transferring all my items. Later, I took our previous dock that we built and I'm gonna be transforming this thing into a bridge instead. This bridge is just gonna go across the river and we can also fish off this thing too, so that's gonna be pretty nice. But yeah, it's just gonna reach the other side of the land. And I ended up finishing up the bridge before the end of the day. This is what it looks like right now, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Also, I need, to, I need to finish up that fisherman hut. I've been leaving that on hold for a while. And to end off this beautiful day, I went into my river and shot up some squids. That sounded wrong. I'm sorry, squids. I just want your ink. On day 183, I decided to get some more villagers, because steak is not a good food source for me right now. I need some golden carrots, but to do that, I need to get another villager. Now, I'm thinking about, like, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to get these guys out of here? And how am I gonna make them breed and then make them go back inside their slots? Like, how am I gonna do this? I guess I didn't think this through when I was designing it. Alright guys, I got myself an idea. It's kind of a scuffed idea, but it might actually work. So, I managed to trap the zombie down inside that corner right there. And all I gotta do is lower these villagers down and then they'll be free inside this little room. And when nighttime comes, it's still day outside as you can see, but when nighttime comes, they should go into their beds, and then hopefully when they're in this room, I can just breed with them easier, and the baby villager should turn out as a farmer because I have a composer here. It's kind of a crazy plan, but it should work out. Now all I gotta do is just wait till nighttime so I can release these guys. Or actually, I could just release them right now. Why don't I just do that? Now it's the next day and they both slept in their beds. I'm gonna hand them some food and now they should breed. Come on now, pick up the food. Come on, pick up the food, bro. There we go. Oh, and this wandering trader actually had some useful things. I bought a couple of blue orchids and also some dark oak saplings. Thank you, Mr. Trader. Later, I started to gather some birch leaves for the custom tree that I was gonna build in front of our mansion slash house. I'm not sure if I can call it a mansion yet. And I tried my best, and here's what it looks like. I'm not too good at building custom trees, as you can see, but I followed, like, F-Whip style of the skinny trees using the fences, and I just really like this orange color, though. The orange color from my texture pack just gives it a really nice feeling, and yeah, we can always delete it or remove it if we ever want to. It's pretty easy to remove. I checked back on the villagers the next day, and there we go. We had another baby villager ready for me to use to get some food. I did some chores around the base, just cleaning some things up, including this floor right here that we never actually filled out. And also changing up our little dome thing, adding like more glass to fill in the bottom. And I also added an official doorway, which I like hadn't had before for some reason. There was no way to get in. I ended off the day with a little bit of fishing at our new dock. There were a lot of squids in this thing, like get, get out of the way bro, I'm trying to fish dude. We're gonna have to execute this guy. Yeah, what I've noticed is that there's a lot of squid in this river, and I thought squids like mostly spawn in oceans, but I guess not. Like, there's a lot in our river too. That's a good thing, of course, because that means we don't have to travel as far if we want some ink. Uh, so I've been thinking, and I feel like our base needs a bit more space. That that rhymed, bro. I'm actually a poet. Okay, let's get back on track. But like our house, I feel like it's not big enough. Like there, it could just be so much bigger and look so much better. It'd be like pretty much a mega base at this point. I'm just gonna expand it on this side, and then maybe make it wrap around the dome. That way we could have two back doors to our house. Okay, let's go. Oh, there's a there's a dude dying. Hey, yo, chill, chill. Wait, I'm why dying. is he dying? Is he suffocating? Is he he can't be drowning, right? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, he was suffocating in that huh? dirt block. Oh no! I knew. Okay, I saw him earlier and I knew he was gonna drop down, but I I hope I thought he forgot. Okay, then this guy was this guy was suffocating in that one block. I don't know how that happens, but I'm glad you're okay, I guess. Just, uh, he, he literally can't get touched. If he gets touched one more time, he's dead. Okay, well, let's get back on track. I came here because I wanted to see if our villager was all grown up. Uh, yeah, he is. There he is. I brought myself a stack of emeralds, and I need him to turn into a farmer. Oh, wait, it's nighttime. Hold on. Let's sleep. Alright, well, it's day now, and it looks like he is a farmer, so that's good. Now we can just trade with him and hopefully get him up to his golden carrot level. That is pretty much going to be our brand new food source, since I'm running low on steak, as you guys can see. Oh, I just realized this guy has melons and pumpkins for sale. Last season, I used melons and pumpkins as a great way to get emeralds, because it only cost me one pumpkin and one melon to trade for emeralds. That's only when they're discounted from zombies, though. Which means we should probably build a pumpkin slash melon farm pretty soon. The problem is, I don't have melons right now. Ooh, and also, I'm gonna run you guys through some changes I've made to our base. So as you can see, on this whole left side over here, I've just added another big room. And also, there might be a balcony on the front, not sure yet. I'm not sure if it's gonna look too clustered or if it's gonna be fine. Also, the back over here, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a balcony back there. Just so there's a way to get out to the back dome area. And you can see I added a little door there. And also some subtle changes like doors on the balcony and in the front. 
Later, I set out on a trek with my horse to find a savanna village. Why am I finding a savanna village, you ask? Well, according to this Minecraft wiki right here, it actually says that melon seeds can be found inside chests of savanna villages. Oh, wow, wait, there's a bee right here. Oh, what's up? Doesn't that mean, like, a bee's nest should be somewhere nearby? Okay, whatever, we're getting off track again. Yeah, I'm gonna try to find this thing, hopefully get some melon seeds in our hands. And soon enough, I stumbled across a village, but this one was not a savanna one. It was actually on the edge of a savanna biome. That's pretty unlucky. Oh, wait, have we been here before? Oh, wait, yeah, we have been here. This place is looted. And actually, pretty soon after that, I found ourselves a savanna village. This one was really close to our house. I actually ended up stealing a lot of things here, starting with some bookshelves, I'm sorry villagers, and also their lectern. Also stole a brewing stand, and some of these weird beehive looking blocks. What is this doing in someone's house? Okay, well anyway, we got what we came for. There were some melon seeds just planted right by the edge of this farm. They're babies though, so I'm gonna wait for them to grow up a little more before I harvest them. Because there's actually a higher chance that you don't get seeds if you break a young melon stem. I took a nap inside this guy's bed inside his house while he was just sitting there watching me. Now I'm gonna break one of these stems. Oh yes, we got melon seeds in the first one. I'm just gonna break this other one too, I guess. Oh, and we got two. That's perfect. That's all we really need, so I think it's probably fine to head back. Also, you guys have probably realized that I don't have my horse with me. I left him back at home because I realized that this trip was gonna take a lot longer if I just rode my horse everywhere. The elytra is the way to go. Now I need to find a spot to build our pumpkin and melon farm. I can't really decide whether I want it behind our mansion or if I want it back where all the other farms are. Like this area over here that we have a creeper farm and our sugarcane farm at. But I feel like this place is a bit too far from everything else. I don't really want to travel like and use like two-ish rockets just to get to my farms. I might actually build it by this village house because I just realized that the whole point of this thing is just to get more emeralds from trading. So it would be more convenient if I actually just had it right behind my villager trading area. I could even make an item transporter that just transports it straight down. That'd be so sick. I'm gonna clear out this space and get ready to build the farm here. I got myself all the stuff I need. I only have two seeds, but I do have bones, so I should be able to make bone meal with it. And I think we're ready. Enjoy this time lapse. Well, as you guys have noticed, this farm is a lot smaller than my other farm. I think it might be about half its size. Oh, and I probably should have clarified, by other farm, I meant the same melon and pumpkin farm that I built in the last season. In the last season, I had a surplus of melons and pumpkins. It was just way too much. I had, like, multiple double chests just filled with stacks and stacks of melons and pumpkins. It was way too much for me to handle. So I'm gonna cut down on some materials, and the production output should be plenty for us, because we're only gonna be using this for trading, pretty much. Alright, well, enjoy the rest of this time lapse. I am pretty much done with this farm, all I gotta do is just build the output thing now, or like the thing that collects it, I need like a chest and a hopper, I still haven't done that. But yeah, we got our minecart running through this whole thing, and one side is pumpkin, one side is melon, I actually forgot right now which one is which, but one of them is pumpkin, and the other side is melon, all we gotta know. I added a bit of glass to try to make it look a bit nicer, I mean, I'm not really gonna be seeing this much, so I'm not gonna be trying as much as I did the last season to make it look nice. Tops are kinda boring and bland, yeah, it's nothing really that special. But this should provide us enough stuff that we can use in trading. So all I gotta do is just add that thing right there, which is the collection system, and then we should be good. I just dropped these guys some food, so hopefully they start breeding. Yeah, I, I recorded because I saw some red hearts appear. Oh, there's already a kid. Hello there. Yeah, as I was saying, I recorded because I saw some red hearts appear like right away, which means they were breeding. And now we got ourselves another kid. The more villagers, the better, you know? We should probably turn this guy into a librarian. I spent the rest of day 191 and some of day 192 expanding our house. And I decided to just make another balcony on the other side of our house. In the front, by the way. Like, this is so extra. Why, why am I even doing this? Just wasting materials at this point. Oh, and I added some water to this map area right here. And something that I feel like we're missing is some mossy cobblestone. But we don't have any vines. And uh, I think the only way to get vines is in a jungle. Which I haven't really gone on to explore that much yet to find a jungle. That's for sure a good thing to put on my list. I don't think we're going to be able to do it this episode because we don't have much time left. Oh, and also, I was admiring our map over here, but this island just looks amazing to build on. Like, it looks so good. There's just a river running around it, and it's right there. We could kind of expand our colony, slash base, slash village, whatever you want to call it, over into this mountainous area. 
build a lot of things there. It could look really cool. Yeah, the scenery of this place just looks amazing. The acacia biome is just sick. Yeah, right here though, in this corner, I'm thinking of building like a little farm, just a house where a villager can chill at, and then like a bunch of wheat fields, because wheat fields look beautiful. It's just a thought in my mind right now, but let's give it a shot and let's see if it turns out good. Alright, and here is our little farm area completed. Almost, actually. I have to plant some wheat in. Hold on, I can actually do some of that now, because I got a bit of seeds from breaking a lot of these, like, grass things. Yeah, but we got a nice little path that walks yourself up to this just empty house. It's really- it's so small. There's literally nothing in here. Oh, also, the view isn't that great. Like, you're looking straight at some dirt on this side, and then- I mean, this, this view is alright. You can see the plains over there. But yeah, uh, this actually turned out, like, pretty much how I was thinking. I, I actually enjoy it a lot. I tried adding some walls on the side, but uh, I don't think- they look kind of weird, so I might have to like, watch some YouTube tutorials on how to build walls, bro. Like, I- I'm literally- this is the first time, dude. Yeah, I'm kinda too late- oh, no, dude. I- I dropped my- I dropped my whole back at home, bro, no. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, I'm too lazy to change the walls right now, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna have to go back to our old base and grab a bunch of wheat seeds, cause I know I have a ton there. After all that building, I treaded down into the deep depths of the nether. I wanted to get full netherite armor by the end of the 200 days. There's not much time left, but hopefully we can do it. After all that ancient debris gathering, I managed to come out with 8 pieces, which is actually perfect because that's exactly how much I need to make 2 more sets. Or 2 more armor pieces. But yeah, that was a very successful nether trip overall. Oh, and also I'm getting some diamond armor because I want to put some of this stuff on the armor stands that I've just been having here for a while, and they're just naked right now, so let's put some armor on them. This looks pretty cool, but we can mix and match stuff around. We could have some have iron, some have gold armor. For now, since I don't have all those types of armor, I'm probably just going to put everything as diamond armor. And here we go, 8 netherite scraps, we got ourselves our gold, and we can craft 2 netherite ingots. There we go. I'm here at the upgrade station, and we can upgrade this thing fine. Oh wait, this is a blast furnace, I'm dumb. Alright, this is the actual upgrade station, let's put our netherite stuff in there. Netherite helmet, look at that thing, plus 3 armor, plus 3 armor toughness, plus 1 knockback resistance. Oh my god. Same thing with our netherite boots, that's looking amazing. Oh, and we even got the advancement. Cover me in debris. Let's put this stuff on and let's see how epic we look. In under 200 days, I managed to get netherite armor. That's a good thing for me because usually I, I never do it. Like, usually I don't care enough to get it. But this season, we got it pretty early. So here I'm standing on top of this tree on day 198. We got a great view of our farmhouse over there. It's looking amazing. It's looking great. Really glad how this turned out. But yeah, we pretty much done with that farmhouse over there, I just added some lights and some finishing touches. But over here, I want to build like a foundation or something, at least for the fisherman hut. I want it to be really small and kind of like a slanted roof kind of thing, that's my idea. And a bit of building later, this is all done, it's super simple, super small and tiny, but it just adds a nice feeling next to our dock. Oh hey, there's a squid there. Let me get you out of here. There we go, swim away, swim away. Alright, let's get back on track. These roofs used to look boring, so I added some, like, textures on them. They look kind of whack, but I think they're fine for now. Also, putting our fishing rod on that item frame right there, and yeah, we got barrels on the inside, as you can see, to store our fish. It's just a super simple design. I really love it. Oh, and our farm over there looks amazing in the distance, across the river, next to the mountain. Oh, and that reminds me, let me show you guys some little interior work I did inside this 3x3 house. If you look inside, we got a bed, crafting table, composter. That way, the villager can be a farmer if I get him in there. On day 199, I built this other custom tree over here, and I also did some super secret stuff preparing for day 200, and you guys will see soon enough what I am doing. It is now day 200, the day you guys have all been waiting for. We started from that over there, 
to now this bigger house oh it just lagged i'm sorry about that <laughs> this this bigger house over here we got some nice custom trees we got a dock we got a fisherman hut we got a i can't <laughs> this is not a good angle this tree is blocking my way we got a nice farmhouse over there the wheat looks like it's starting to grow that is amazing we got ourselves a horse too i need a name for this horse if you guys have watched this far, drop some names down in the comments below, and if I like one of them, I'll pick one and shout you out for the next episode. But yeah, oh, it's getting too late now. I want to do this at, like, uh, sundown, but I guess it's a bit too late. But here is our sign, 200 days, and this is when the video is going to be uploaded, February 25th, 2021. Let's cue the celebration. There we go, we got fireworks! And that is what I was doing on day 199. Oh, that's kind of loud. There we go, that was it. I actually, that actually took a lot of fireworks too. I think I used like a stack or so. Oh yeah, and I, I gotta clean all this up, but it's kind of messy. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video took so long for me to make. I think like 60 plus hours, 60, 70 hours to make this video. So it would mean the world to me if you guys liked the video. But yeah, comment down. Oh, oh my God, I literally cannot be safe, dude. Okay, but yeah, leave some comments down below. What do you guys want to see me do next? And also some suggestions for the world. What should I build and what should I do? What should I explore? Lots of exciting things coming up soon in this world. I'm going to leave this here as like a monument to show kind of what we did, even though it doesn't really work anymore. This video has probably been one of my favorite videos of all time so far, just because I've learned so much from my previous series. Oh, oh my, I'm going inside. I've learned so much from my previous series that I made this series a lot better. I learned from my mistakes, and I personally, I think I've gotten to be a little bit of a better builder as well, and I hope you guys can get some inspiration as well from my builds. Well, anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.